Flastib, it's me, Gleeza from Made with Glee. Welcome back to my channel, to those of you who are returning. And um, thank you for stopping in, for, to those of you who are visiting me for the first time. I hope you will hit that like button and maybe subscribe button and come back to see me again. Anyway, it's been quite a while since I made a video. Um, I know way too long. The last time I made a video was in November. And I do apologize, I should have made one sooner. I wanted to make one sooner. Timing, it just didn't happen. Um, it's stuff that don't always work out the way we wanted to. And today's my first opportunity that I'm able to uh, go ahead and make a video. So here I am. What have I been up to? I'm gonna, and I'm, I'm going through this really quickly because I, this is like my third or fourth attempt. Um, one of them came out like over an hour and I just don't want to put up a video that's over an hour. So I'm just going to talk real fast and try to get through this video as quickly as possible because I have things to do. Um, what have I been up to since uh, November? Okay, when you last saw me, I was working on uh, Mary. And I told you I only had a border and I didn't even show it to you, but this is Mary. And this is from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. They finish it as blocks. I did it as a flat. And um, basically, this is being used on my, uh, what is this thing called? It's a bottle, mesh bottle holder thing that I, that I was inspired by Priscilla and Chelsea of the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch to put magnets on. And I changed the flowers and the um, the stitching out seasonally. Now for Mary, um, for Christmas, I had red poinsettias in this in the vase, but I wanted to show you what Mary looked like. And it has a little floral pick on the top. And right now, for now until I change it out, which should be hopefully soon, um, I currently have winter. Again, also from Just Cross Stitch Magazine. And my bows are horrible. I need to watch some more tutorials on how to make really good bows because my bow sucks. Or get a bow maker thing, would you be? So this is winter. Oh, sorry, sorry, wait. Thing, the bottles are moving. The magnets are not catching. There it goes. Oh, sorry. I can't hold this thing. It's very heavy, one-handed. Okay. So this is winter, and it normally stays perfectly fine, I don't know what's going on with it. So this is winter, um, Just Cross Stitch Magazine again, uh, and this is my seasonal decor that I finished um, this month. Uh, also, since I last saw you, I finished my Nora Corbett's Holly Pixie that I was working on. And she's absolutely gorgeous. The only change I made to her is her skin tone. She is now a tan girl, brown girl. Um, I mounted her on some tacky board with some like rickrack trim on another tacky board that's covered with holly fabric. Added a floral pick and ribbon on the top. The back is pretty ugly. Um, this is kind of temporary because I'm thinking of perhaps making a standing flat fold of her. And I'm also thinking of maybe doing Miss Christmas Eve and having them on opposite sides. But that's just an idea that's way, way, way out there for now. Um, but I'm quite happy with how she turned out. Um, what else have I done since I last saw you? And I'm going to try to, like I said, I need to get through this video as quickly as possible. So ornaments. Um, I showed you I was working on ornaments and I did make um, for more relatives uh, these letters. I forgot which magazine they were out of with these um, you know these old generic plastic frame thingies. Um, the family letters. So this is ours, the letter K. So this is the one I kept but I did a few more. I think I did an L, a G, I showed you an H. I'm not sure what other letters I did, but I did about five of those are. Um, K is ours, so that's that. I also finally finished my 12 Days of Christmas ornaments. And 12 Days of Christmas, I did not get all 12 on the tree for Christmas. 
Um, I believe I had the first three on the three, four, four of them on the tree for a Christmas, and then the rest were finished after. So here's 12 Days of Christmas. This was in Cross Stitch Favorites 2016 by Maria Diaz, a partridge in a pear tree. I made it into a pillow. The back has this holly fabric, a little gold bow, and a hanging loop. So that's um, one partridge in a pear tree. Two is two turtle doves. Three French hens. Um, four calling birds, five gold rings, ooh, we still have some fluff, five golden rings, um, what comes after five, ooh, six, I know, I, I know how to count, six geese laying, seven swan swimming, Eight maids milking. Uh, ooh, nine and ten. Hold on. Nine lords leaping. No. Nine. I'm sorry. Nine ladies dancing. Ten lords leaping. I think I would know that having all these things I'm stitching. Um, Eleven pipers piping. And finally, twelve drummers drumming. So. These will definitely all be up on my tree for this year. Um, like I said, I only got four up on the tree for 2017, but they're done and I'm quite happy with them. Also, I made, um, I think I showed you the rest. This one, I don't know if you've seen this. This is Festivus for the rest of us. Um, if you're fans of the Seinfeld show, the Costanzas. Um, Festivus for the rest of us, you celebrated with a pole, airing of grievances. Um, I just made this up with an alphabet. I did the pole myself, a little border, nothing special, just scraps of fabric I had left over. I just wanted to observe Festivus for the rest of us along with the other uh, Christmas decoration, you, etc. So. Those are all the ornaments um, I did. Uh, what else did I finish? I did do, I told you, I showed you um, the towel and pillowcase I was doing for my mother-in-law with the fruits. That was finished and I got it, that out to her. Um, what else? Oh, hold on. This is gonna, I, mean, I apologize. Oh, I store my, orna my cross-stitch ornaments and I have another box that's a floral that I store other crusted smalls, but like all Christmas stuff are in like these boxes that you get from Joann's or Michael's. And I buy them when they're on sale, obviously. Um, the other project that I was working on uh, in November that I was hoping to finish was the baby birth record uh, for my nephew who was born in June, Little Sports. Well, long story short, I burnt out. My husband made me stop. I stopped, and I am so glad I did because I can once again like look at it with fresh eyes and want to get it done because I kind of got sick of it, and I was stressing trying to finish it, and it wasn't going to get finished, and my husband like talked common sense into me and said, you know, stop. He's a baby. It's okay. So I stopped. Um, I did all my other gifts for my... Uh, you know they got all their stuff but yeah I stopped so this is I don't know I don't know where I was when you last saw it but this is it now where I left off when I gave up there is some sneakers to finish over here there's all the back stitching left to be done uh, the star needs to be filled in completely this star needs to be filled in completely the rest of this banner needs to be filled in completely and um, of course the back stitching and personalization. So that is my nephew's baby birth record. That's it. Um, then pretty much the holidays happen and I, you know, after that I didn't work on much Christmas or gift related stuff. 
I'm going to show you all the other whips that I worked on. So hold on one second while I grab those. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I mean, everything's on the floor. I don't know where else to put them. My desk and everything is all full, so that's why I have to bend down. Um, in 2017, I was working on two stitch alongs. Um, the first one being Frosted Pumpkin Samplery Happily Ever After. Um, I am so sad to say I did not finish it. The last, the whole last section, the last three books, I believe it is, uh, or was it four, three, four, three. The last three books I have in the last three months I have not done anything, it is still here. So this is Frosted Pumpkin Happily Ever After Sal. And this is the reason why I have not started a Sal for 2018, because I have not finished Happily Ever After. And I am not going to start a new stitch along until my stitch alongs from 2017 are done. That shouldn't take long. I just don't, I don't have the time right now to stitch on it. And then when I do have time to stitch, I'm stitching on something else. So yeah. Okay, the other stitch along I worked on was Connie G Designs Rainbow Myster Mystery Rainbow Style. Rainbow Mystery Style. Um, with the mandalas. I finished all 12 of my mandalas. Definitely did that part in the year. What I did not do was fill in these sections. And I had a little issue. Um, the designer, the she kind of broke it up the pattern, obviously, in pages. And I picked up the wrong page, and I put this here when it was really supposed to be here. And this was supposed to be here. So I messed it up, and then when I went to go do this one, it was when I realized that I messed those two up. So instead of undoing it what I'm gonna do is use this one over here and then I had to switch them down the bottom so that's what kind of like I lost a little bit of motivation on working on this because I simply messed that up by picking up the wrong um, pattern sheet but I'm happy with it um, I will definitely be framing this and putting it up as soon as I finish filling in the inside borders and I really have not worked on it much at all in January and today is the 29th which is sad it's very sad that I'm not done so for the next two days of this month these are my priorities Connie G design rainbow Sal and happily ever after Sal from frosted pumpkin stitchery okay what else have I worked on well New Year's came and of course new year new start and birthday christmas um this is stash related i got this got this for myself for christmas slash birthday um it's realist and it's called bird of happiness i was looking at other stuff on overstock one day before christmas saw it fell in love with it, it had to have it i liked it a lot and it's mine so I started it on uh, January 1st and I spent two days on it and this is what I have it is on printed fabric it is gonna be beautiful when I stitch on it whenever I get to it but that's my new year new start I would like to finish this this year I think it's quite possible that it will be done this year um, it doesn't look to be a very big design or very complicated so yeah that's my new year, new start. Now back to the working whips. Um, obviously, you know I have tons of whips. Um, if you've watched my whip parade, I, I believe it's like 30 something. 30 something whips that I have. Um, but not all of those whips are active. I think I narrowed it down to like 10, 12 whips that I'm actively working on. And then when you get down to it, it's really only like four that I'm really actively working on. So um, out of the active whips, uh, my oldest whip, which was a UFO, um, I shouldn't even call it a UFO. It was lost and then found um, one from my old one. Anyway, the whole house story. If you watch my older videos, you'll know. So uh, this is summer. 
there is still a little bit left. There is one little flower here somewhere right there left to be uh, put in some satin stitch. See the dots? That's supposed to be some lazy daisies. Wherever else you see some dots are French knots. And I have a little back stitching left to do in this little portion of the flowers. Um, and I'll be working on the spring in spring and we'll get back to spring in a second well towards the end of my video but um yeah spring so that's when i plan to really start my next batch of new projects is in the spring so i hope to finish this before that starts um well, when does spring start? The official date, I believe, is March 21st. So, yes, I hope to finish this before March 21st so I can start my fresh batch of projects. So that's to everything's a season. Um, oh, and if you didn't know, the whole entire thing is supposed to look like this. I have the top two already finished. And, again, now I'll be working on the last final portion, which is spring. The other project that I put some time and effort into, and again, I work on this strictly when I am tired, and this is usually late at night, in the evening, um, or when I want to watch TV, or I'm just not feeling like paying attention, I work on this. This is my Chinese kit. It's an 11 count. I don't know what the name is, if anyone is Chinese and could understand the writing or know the name of this pattern, I'd love to know it. I call her the water carrier. Um, it's an 11 count kit that is color coded. So it's nice and easy to stitch when your eyes are tired. Um, I made it all the way across. So the top is completely done. And I've been working on various sections. Um, wherever you see like a little bit of brown hair in there because it, it is just a lot of browns um, and I've been touching working on her face a little bit so that's what I'm doing when I don't feel like working on anything of my any of my more like intensive follow the pattern type projects because this is so easy just to like color code you look at the number pick it that's it so, um, okay, 17 minutes in. I'm, like I said, I'm trying to make this as quick as possible. Uh, the other projects that I worked on, and this was a little bit after, um, again, I got the burnout from working on the baby sampler and all the other stitching felt kits and stuff that I did that I wanted to come back to one of my favorite patterns that I can't wait. I really do enjoy this and I'd love to have this. This is Castles in the Air. Uh, let me move this over. I'm on page two. I'm on page two after working my way all the way down to the bottom to make sure it fits. This is on 16 count. Hand eye Ada by me. Blue on the top, green on the bottom. I think it's appropriate for Castles in the Air. So I worked on that for a little while. Um, and no other starts, nope. Um, the only other, and this is, well, you know how I start kits when I want to shop to stop me from shopping? Well, I still plan to continue to do that this year. Um, this is one of the kits that I started one of those days that I felt like just starting something. So I picked the, picked it. I can't talk. I went. I picked it back up again, and this is Indian Lady in Orange Sari by Lenart. And I have to say, Lenart is like one of the only companies that I find a lot of great culturally diverse um, kits and projects from. They have Asians. They have a few Arab women. They, of course, they have the Indian Lady in Sari. There is an older Lenart kit. That I refuse to pay 60 bucks for but um, it's on eBay for 60 bucks but it's like an Indian ladies with water and uh, they have like water you know I'm into the ladies carrying water thing but yeah um, Lenart so anybody got a Lenart with the Indian ladies in their stash not this one and not the orange the other Indian lady patterns or the Arab ones 
and you want to get rid of it to me, um, let me know. I'm, yeah. Oh, by the way, I'm still not on other social media besides this and Instagram, so I am missing out on all the Yara Whips and, um, you know, what's her name? Mel Melanie Watkins, Soulful Sister. Uh, I watch her videos and, you know, I, I like the idea of all these organized things, but I'm just not organized or social. So, yeah, it doesn't work out. Anyway, back to Lady in the Orange Sari. I started her when I opened the kid and messed with her, but I went back to her and this is what I have. And I really started working on her after I finished uh, the Holly Pixie because I wanted to work on only one mirror at a time. And before I uh, start another Mira lady, I said, let me just go ahead and work a little bit on my Indian lady. So I did. Because uh, the next uh, Mira that I will be starting will more than likely be the Maidens. Um, I already put a few stitches in Lady of Mystery, which I'll be picking up again. But um, the Maidens, I definitely want to do Maidens of the Season in their color converted skin tones. So... That's it, people. That's all the stitching I have done. I have not stitched a whole lot. Um, I'm in the garden a lot. I'm cooking. I'm living life. You know, it's just that that's what it is. Um, I have been sewing a little bit. Um, I made a quilt top last year. Um, but it's not big enough, so I... Okay, I made like a regular quilt top that they say is like a, you know, for a queen size. But when you put it on the bed, it doesn't give you any overhang. So I, I am now adding borders around that quilt top to make it where it has an overhang. Um, so like I'm going from like a 60 by 60, no, I'm going by like a, from a 60 by 80 quilt top that was ready made. I am trying to make it, I believe, is like 110 by 110. Yeah. So, um, because I want it to be like a bedspread type of quilt where, you know, you have overhang on both sides. So anyway, so I'm working on that. I can't show it to you because it's in my guest room where I have all my sewing stuff when I do cutting and stuff like that spread out. Um, so that's over there. And I use my guest room wall to like hang my quilt up when I want to piece stuff together but I'm not I'm done with the piecing that stuff was done last year I am just trying to make it bigger now so that it actually serves the purpose of what I wanted for which is to be a usable everyday bedspread and guys who you guys who are quilting or you who are new to quilting um, keep in mind the quilt if you don't pre-wash your fabrics before you start the whole quilting process after you quilt your quilt and you wash it your quilt does shrink significantly sometimes um like i've made twin size with overhang and washed it and then by the time i wash it like maybe once or twice it's like exactly twin size so yeah it's a little yeah it, it kind of what's the word it shrinks it like yeah it compacts i don't know so go bigger go bigger because especially if you want like the overhang if you're looking if you're just doing like a lap quilt or a baby blanket i think that's fine you don't have to think about that but if you're going for like something to cover your bed definitely think of the overhang how much you want it to go so yeah that's my quiltings that's what i'm doing as to sewing i'm also knitting and I am knitting and it's sideways because I have the sleeve on double points right now and I just want to make sure I don't drop a stitch. This is another $5 in Paris sweater, which is, you can find a pattern on Ravelry. I went down like three sizes on a needle and my neckline is still huge. So I'm going to be picking back up all these stitches and um, trying to tighten this binding because it's supposed to be a boat neck. But I don't want bra strap shoulder, sh bra straps showing, so I'm gonna like either. I guess I could crochet, but it's a, it's too stretchy. So basically, I need to tighten um, 
And I, I swear, I, I went like three sizes down on the needles and I still, my, my gauge is so loose. My, my tension, my knitting tension is, I guess, extremely loose. So I'm going to be doing that when I finish putting on the sleeves. Um, the sleeves are short sleeves because I am in South Florida, like I said, so I'm planning to go like right here with the sleeves. So pretty much that's it. 25 minutes. Okay, great. So that is everything that I have been up to since you last saw me in November. Um, again, I apologize for taking so long to make a video. I should have come back earlier and, you know, but I'm only going to make these videos when I have things to show you guys. There's no point in me making a video if I don't have anything to show you and if I'm not stitching, which stitching is my hobby. I can only do it when, you know, the time for a hobby arises. Most of the other time I'm doing other things, so... I do what I have to do. Anyway, being that it was my birthday month and I became 35 again, um, and this again is another way to hold me accountable to making another video, I am going to, and I'm not saying that G word, but I have up for offer. You know, I told you guys duplicates in the stash. Well, I have all four of these gym shores. Um, and I happen to have two of winter, and I also happen to have this little stitchy lady, um, $7.99 value. Um, let's see, you have until the end of February 28th to let me know which one you would like. That's all. Just, you know, leave a comment saying, hey, I would like this one, and I will put you into consideration. And, um, it, it uh, let's see, this one is called Stitching Angel, so say I'd like Stitching Angel, and this one is called Winter Angel. I'd like Winter Angel. Um, obviously, you have to leave a comment, and you have to be subscribed to me. I would hope you are, if you're watching and to know about this. And I'm going to give you uh, pretty much all of February because I don't know when I'm going to be back. And I feel like a month is definitely the time frame that I would like to be making these videos. So um, and this is going to force me to return to you guys in the beginning of March to um, tell you who gets what. So Winter Angel, Stitching Angel, happy birthday from me. Um, yeah, okay, what else do I have to tell you guys about? Um, all my favorite floss tubers. There's so many of you guys I watch regularly. I apologize for not leaving comments. It's been busy. Um, I've been in the kitchen. I've been, you know, like when I'm watching floss tube, I've been in the kitchen or I've been sewing. I'm doing something, you know, where I have it on. Like the auto playlist. I don't know what's going on with my, uh, subscription thing you know the the on your, your sidebar because like I was trying to go down by order as I watch you guys and then you know start from the bottom and work my way up and then all of a sudden the names will be all jumbled up and then I'm all confused of who I watched and who I didn't watch but I am trying to uh, go through my entire subscription list and leave a comment on everyone who I'm subscribed to who um, has made a video in the last two months because I feel like I'm literally two months behind. I'm still watching videos made in December. Um, yeah, so show me your Christmas stuff, guys, because I'm still watching. I'm still I'm still catching up with December stuff. So if you're late making a video, whenever you make it, make it. I'll be watching it late anyhow. So, yeah. Um, what else? What else? There's some new people I know. Oh my gosh, I don't have a list. Um, and I'm horrible at names and I can't remember. Um, Stitchy Shannon. I don't know your channel name. Um, but hey girl. Um, Crafty Magpie. Sarah Little Snips. Um, all the regulars I watch all the time. Oh my gosh. Orietta, who else? Like I said, I'm so like far behind watching videos. 
Any, anyway, I'm not even gonna go through the list. I watch a lot of you guys, and I enjoy all of your videos. And um, whenever I get around to it, I will at least make an effort to leave one comment for this year, if I can, to say, "Hey, I am watching you." Um, I may not leave a comment in every single video, and I definitely will not be seeing it the same day that you make that video. That just never ever happens. The whole live thing that you guys do, I will never catch. I, I think I, I caught one once. Um, I'll never, and that was Robert, yes, Robert. That was like a first and only live video I ever caught. Um, I never catch them. And now I see you guys are doing, what is this thing called? Stitch with me. Um, I don't know if I have time for Stitch with me. Because I kind of want to see stuff. Like, show me, show me what you did already because I'm at, there's so many of you that, yeah, I'm really not watching Stitching With Me videos. I kind of like skip over that because if you have a floss tube update, I will watch your floss tube update before I watch a Stitch With Me video because I want to see all of the things that you update me on rather than you just stitching because there's so many other people I want to see what they up updated me on, right? Yeah. So that's pretty much um, my watching experience. So. If I haven't gotten to uh, leave you a comment yet, please don't feel any way about that. I am working my way down that list. I will, I will leave a comment eventually on one of your videos this year. Um, but there's so many of you that, whose videos I tremendously enjoy. I love your personalities. Um, all my Australians, hello, I love everyone in Australia, I love all your accents, I love all the Australian stitchers, all the British stitchers, um, southern people, you northern people freezing your butt off, um, Eskimos and <laughs> Alaskans, yeah, I watch you all, so, um, Basically, I will try my best to be a little bit more social and to make sure that you know that I appreciate your video and um, That is my goal for the rest of this year. Other than that, I'm gonna just stitch what I want when I want um, I have one other gift to make this year, but that's it Samurai for my aunt is on hold because she just talked about downsizing So I'm like hmm Maybe giving her cross stitch is not a good idea because I might be collecting some of her stuff. So, uh, gift wise, I think just after that baby sampler is done, um, my in law's 50th anniversary is next year, January, so I think I want to make a gift for them. But other than that, it's going to be just me until ornament season, and then I'm going to make maybe ornaments for my immediate family. But I really, again, I want to focus on stitching for me. For me, my family, my kids, my sons have told me they wanted certain kits or patterns like they like, and I haven't done it. I haven't done it for anyone, so I'm going to do it for myself, my family, the people who live here in the house that sees all these things and will enjoy them with me. So that is my goal for the rest of this year. Um, I wish I could participate in all those groups and keep up with all those stitch alongs, uh, but I can't. It's just not me, but I do follow along in spirit. I do watch. I wish, you know, I could, but I, I, I try when I can and I, I follow along. I live through you guys, basically. Um, and eventually I'll maybe get to those things. So, 33 minutes. I always ramble at the end. I, I just never know when to stop. Um, what can I tell you randomly? Uh, random facts like, um, oh, what is going on? Oh, super blue, super blue moon, super blue blood moon, whatever. Um, okay, that is uh, 31st of January. Um, what can I say about that? I think it is becoming a little overrated these super moon things um, a super moon is when the moon makes its closest approach to the earth Par the, the parody um, scientific uh, but uh, the closest approach to the earth so super moons are fairly rare I believe it's 222,000 miles 222,000 220 
one twenty two thousand somewhere around there is the the perigee of what, what the closest the moon approaches earth so super moons are extremely rare <coughs> however <clears throat> in the recent years it seems that whenever the moon makes a close approach even though it's not the actual closest approach um, they'll call it a supermoon so I think it's becoming a little like watered down the term supermoon because it's no longer that that specific closest closest that the moon will ever get but now it's close so like let's say 221,000 is the absolute closest so now maybe this super moon is 223,000. So it is a difference of 2,000 miles. While, yes, that's close, and in terms of space, it's, you know, not a big deal. I just feel that the terminology is being watered down, and, you know, like they make such a big deal about it, and mm, yeah. Um, and the blue moon, of course, is because it happens you have a full moon twice in the same month. Um, I like moon mythology. I like, um, I think it's fascinating. You know, the moon, you know, you grow up as a little kid. I don't know if you ever had this, but you always feel like the moon was watching you or the moon's following you. I, I remember as a child, I used to, why is the moon following me? Um, yeah, it took a while, but I've